What's up guys, Intentional back with yet another video, and today I figure I'll go over all the mounts that you can get in TBC, and how to obtain them. I will not be going into any particular order, but I'll have the video sectioned out, so if you don't want to see all the mounts in just a particular one, well then you can do that. Without any further ado, let's just hop into it. Okay, let's just get the basic mounts out of the way, so we can move on to the cooler stuff. For the Alliance, you are able to buy blue griffin mounts and epic griffin mounts. The blue griffin mounts require expert flying which costs 250 gold and the mounts themselves costing 50 gold. While the epic griffins require artisan flying which costs 5000 gold and the mounts themselves costing around 100. The alliance also gets the new elec mounts which require you to be exalted with the exodar unless you're a draenei. For the horde you have the wavern mounts. It's the same thing with the alliance where the blue waverns require expert flying and cost 50 gold and the epic waverns require artisan flying and cost 100 gold. The Horde also get the Hawkstrider mounts, and you must be exalted with the Silver Moon City to get these mounts, unless you're a Blood Elf, of course. Next up, we have my personal favorite mount, the Fiery Warhorse's Reigns. Coming in as a drop from Ottoman the Huntsman, one of the first bosses that can be found in Karazhan. This horse has a fairly low drop chance at roughly 1%. I personally hope to get this mount on TBC, and I wish the best of luck to anyone else wanting to get this mount as well. A very unique mount can be found in the heroic version of Set the Calls. Dropping with a rough 1-2% chance off Anzu, the range of the Ravenlord looks like nothing else in this era of WoW. Looking like more of something coming from Warlords of Draenor, this is for sure a mount to flex with. Next up we have the Amani Warbear. Coming from Zolomon, this mount is really a show of how good not only you are, but your guild as a whole. It drops with a 100% rate if you are able to complete the timed event within the raid. The event requires the first 4 bosses killed in a certain amount of time. It starts out with a 20 minute timer, but killing Nalarak will gain an additional 15 minutes and killing Akazan will grant another 10 minutes. Meaning you can have a total of 45 minutes to kill the 4 first bosses, which is easier said than done. Guilds have completed tier 5 raids and moving on to tier 6 raids can still struggle on completing this task. So if you do obtain one, just know that your group is pretty good and that it's well earned. Now engineers are lucky and can obtain 2 flying mounts in TBC. You have the Flying Machine and the Turbocharged Flying Machine. These are really both cool, and the Flying Machine is fairly cheap to make and makes a great first flying mount. As for the Charged Flying Machine, it can be a bit more expensive, but most say that getting engineering to 375 seems to be the tougher part of getting the mount. So all in all, you engineers are getting some really cool mounts fairly easily. Now for the most wanted mount in TBC, we have the Ashes of Alar. This mount drops from Kel'Thas Suntrader, who can be found in the Eye. It has a drop chance of roughly 1.5%. A quick fact about this mount is it actually flies at 310% speed, making it the only mount available to do so without having to do PvP. Speaking of PvP mounts, let's talk about the coveted Netherdrake mounts. In TBC there were a total of 4 arena seasons, each one giving the top 0.5% of arena teams a special Netherdrake, with a speed of 310%. These mounts are extremely rare to see, and I'm sure that's going to be tougher to get at them the second time around simply because people have their eyes on the prize. They weren't able to get them the first time, and they definitely want to get them this time around. So if you plan on going for them, just know that you have 4 chances to be in the top 0.5% and I wish you the best of luck. Next up we have the Nether Rays. These rays can be bought for 160 gold a pop from the Shatari Skyguard, with the catch being you have to be exalted with them. To get exalted, simply do their questline to the point where you can only do dailies, and then farm a crap ton of mobs to collect their dust, which you then turn into potions to see ghosts, and then you kill the ghost to collect some papers, to then summon many bosses, in order to get some more rep. All in all, it's a grind, but totally worth it in my opinion, because the red netherite is biz. Next we have the Swift White Hawk Strider. This mount can be obtained from Kel'Thuzad Sun Strider in the heroic version of Magister's Terrors. Now this mount actually has a higher drop chance than many of the others, coming in at a whopping 4% and is generally wanted by Alliance because it's the only Hawk Strider that they can obtain during TBC. Next up we have the Taubok Mounts. Now there are actually two separate factions to obtain these mounts, with the Maghar being the Horde faction and Alliance having the Kurinai, each having a ton of quests to help gain reputation and obtain rewards. However, if you're looking to obtain the mounts, you're going to be more than likely killing Ogres that give 10 rep each and have a chance to drop Warbeats, which can be turned in for 500 rep per 10. I have to say that this farm really wasn't bad and the mounts look pretty cool. But if you are interested in farming ogres, well there are actually two more tablets that can be obtained. In the middle of the grand is Hala, a PvP zone that can be controlled by either faction. Depending on what faction has control of the time, there will be a vendor here selling the two mounts. 
but they each cost 70 holo battle tokens and 15 holo research tokens. Now the battle tokens can be earned by killing players of the opposite faction within the vicinity of Hala. While the research tokens can be obtained by collecting Oshogun Crystal Powder, which drops randomly from mobs in the Grand. So basically do some farming, get in some PvP action, and get yourself some cool looking mounts. Now let's get into some holiday mounts, and to start we're going with the Headless Horseman Steed. 2007 was the first year of this event, and the mount itself actually dropped from the Headless Horseman himself instead of the loot filled pumpkin that we know so well. It had a 1% drop chance, and everyone wanted it because it was the only flying horseman at the time. Okay, so for these next ones, it gets a bit odd. But we have the Brewfest Ram, the Blue and Purple version, and the Brewfest Kodo. Now, Brewfest was actually changed during TBC, with the first version not having a boss to kill, and simply having a vendor set up so you can purchase the Blue slash Purple version of the Rams. The second version got rid of the vendor and added a Corian Dire Brew as a boss who drops the Swift Brewfest Ram and the new Brewfest Kodo. However, they did not add in the Blue Ram. Which means the blue version of the Brewfest Ram was only available for that one Brewfest in 2007. Now sadly, I believe Blizzard will release TBC as of the 2.4.3 patch, meaning the blue Ram will not be available. But if they don't, make sure to get this mount. Next up we have the Cenarian War Hippogriff. Now this mount simply requires you to be exalted with the Cenarian Expedition and can be bought for 1600 gold. Now there are many ways to get reputation with this faction. Of course, do all the main quests that you can, but you can also just run dungeons in the area to gain reputation. For example, the mobs in the Steam Vault give 12 rep a pop. Or you could farm out Coil Fang armaments and just turn them in for 75 rep a pop. Now we have the Netherwing Drakes. These mounts were the most sought after in TBC it seems, and for good reason. I mean, they look pretty badass. Anyhow, these come from the Netherwing faction, who can be found in Shadow Moon Valley. Essentially, there are quests for you to do, and then dailies will start to be unlocked, and you want to do these dailies to grind to be exalted. However, there are also eggs that you can find in the area that can be turned in for extra reputation. And this is where the hard part comes in. There's just so much competition for these eggs to finish out the mount, that you're more than likely just rely on the daily quest to get this job done. But they are totally worth the daily grind, however. I mean, look how badass these mounts are. There are people that are joining WoW as of today and then going back to TBC and farming out these mounts because they look just that cool. Well, those were all the mounts you can obtain in the Burning Crusade. Which ones are you going for? Like I said, the Fiery Warhorse is for sure on the top of my list, and I think I might actually finish out the Nether Drake farm. And yeah, I hope this helps someone out there. And if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button, it really does help me as a content creator. And if you want to see more from me, then hit that sub button. Hope you guys have a good one, and peace!